The first section is the Egyptian roots of sound science. And this quote is from Jehuti, Thoth or Tot, Hermes. What is below is like that which is above, and what is above is like that which is below to accomplish the miracle of the one thing. It's sometimes called the great work. And this image is a papyrus that is duplicating what is on the ceiling at the temple of Dendera, Egypt. So we have the celestial patterns above and the music below. The sky and its stars make music to you. The sun and the moon praise you. The Neteru sing to you. And that is from the temple at Dendera. This temple is a perfect example of the principle of as above, so below. It has the heavenly zodiac above, and the temple carvings on the pillars and the walls are all dedicated to musical instruments and the goddess Hathor, goddess of music and transformation. And here you see the sistrum, the musical rattles with Hathor on them. Hathor listens to the eternal music of creation, similar to the ancient Hindu cow goddess Vak. She is Logos, mother of the Vedas, Vak, Vaka, Vos, voice. It's the root for our word for voice. Vak preceded Saraswati, and she's not well known anymore, but she is the mother of voice and song. Mother of all mantras, I utter the word that gods and men alike shall welcome. I make them mighty. My word makes a sage, a rishi, and a brahman. And that is from the Vedas. My word, my song, creates a different being. Your word, your song, does that. Here is Thoth in the Hatshepsut temple. Thoth is the oldest son of Ra, and he hatched the world egg. He's an ibis bird. This work of creation he accomplished by the sound of his voice. He is the most powerful friend of the soul, and through the trueness of his voice, contributes to the soul's resurrection. We will learn at the end of the presentation also that he was the guide of Osiris and Isis. Through the trueness of your voice, your voice, you are resurrected. So when we purify the voice through breath work, chanting, meditation, toning, releasing, our voice becomes clear and it becomes a healing balm for the world and others. Egyptian temple music was guided by Thoth and his beloved Ma'at, goddess of truth. They taught that by continual singing of harmonious chants, humans grew unto, like unto the gods. Also, when we sing in nature, the trees expand their force field. The stones in the stone circles in Great Britain, we did this dowsing test over and over and over. Everything increases its energy field with sacred song, with well-intentioned tones. 
The singing of hymns on earth is the reflection of heavenly harmony. The hymns of Hermes, these are actual texts that you can read. G.S. Mead, G.R.S. Mead uh, translated quite a few of them. The hymns of Hermes state that sacred sounds pour forth blessings and open a path throughout nature straight to the divine. The Vedas say that it is the fastest way to enlightenment and awakening. Sacred sound. The Egyptian texts say that Isis, Queen of Heaven, received the secret name of Ra. Actually, she tricked it out of him. He was uh, bitten by a venomous snake, and he was dying. Ra is actually more than our sun. It is this energy behind the brilliance in the sun. You could call it the great central sun. So Ra was dying and Isis tricked him out of his secret name because with that name, she could do anything. She had the sound codes of creation. She uttered the spell with the magical power of her mouth. Her tongue was perfect and it never halted at a word. Beneficent in command and word was Isis the woman of magical spells. Now I put the references here so that if you want to further research these sources, there is a tremendous amount of information available. With this key, Isis chanted the dismembered parts of Osiris back together. Remember, he was cut into 14 pieces by his brother Set. Thou wilt enchant the sky, the earth, the abyss, the mountains and the sea. Thou wilt understand the language of the birds. I always wondered where that language of the birds, they call it the green language in alchemy. I wondered where that came from. Of course, it had to come from Isis, and here she is with her great wings, the language of the birds. Knowing the technology and the science of sound. In Egyptian papyri, Isis changed into a swallow and cried and whistled as she circled the dead body of her beloved Osiris. It's interesting because every place that has a black Madonna in France or Europe in general or a temple to Isis or Mary Magdalene has swallows circumambulating every day in the season in spring and summer and fall and they are whistling and their whistling creates a beat frequency which is two tones almost rubbing really close but even more close than that. And it creates an altered state, sort of like this whistling flute. The song of Isis enchanted and infused Osiris with life to give birth to their child, to their creation, Horus. The swallow Hieroglyph in Egyptian language means great. The Egyptian wur means to anoint. So these are connected with Isis, the great winged one. I have a sense that she's one of those of the bird tribes that came a long, long time ago. And when you go into many ancient traditions, you find people that are with wings or manifestations of birds like Quetzalcoatl, the plumed serpent. He's plumed, he's a feathered serpent. 
The transformation into a swallow is one of the magical texts in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. The words of power in this text restored life after death to both Osiris and the scribe Ani to fly freely as a swallow. And here you see the swallow on the bark of the sun. This is the hieroglyph. On the bark of the sun, the swallow is the first to announce the return of the light, singing the dawn of a new day. This is a translation by Normandy Ellis of part of the Egyptian Book of the Dead about Isis turning into a swallow. In the dark marrow of my bones, I have made myself light. I am the swallow spinning at dawn through whom light enters the sky, who flies formless above a world of forms ringing across the horizon. Enter me, I shall make you a god, she cried. Enchantress and wife, she stamps and spins, she raises her arms to dance, and from her armpits rises a hot perfume that fills the sails of boats along the Nile. She stirs the breezes that make the sailors swoon, under her spell, I come to myself. Under her body, I come to life. She dances and draws down heaven. As above, so below. And this is a voice print of a swallow song. The dominant notes are C-sharp and F-sharp. Here we have those frequencies emanating as elements and color from one of the largest stars in our galaxy, Eta Carinae. Interesting, one of the largest stars in our galaxy is emanating these frequencies. And the swallows are mirroring on the earth that song. The Egyptian manuscripts have shown musical notation using seven tones or notes and seven colors. The French Egyptologist M. Villotou found that Egyptian harps had colored strings to match the musical notation. And here you see a seven-stringed harp. And here, there are seven notes to an octave on my harp, and they are colored. So this is a very ancient tradition. This occurred on my wall one day, the crystal in the window refracted perfectly to make the shadow of seven strings and the colors of the rainbow and the seven tones. And we have the seven tones and colors in the human energy system. This is the harpist of Ma'at from the tomb of Ramses III, Thebes. I would like to have a harp like that, wouldn't you? We have some harpists right in the front here. <laughs> Maybe we should commission someone to make one. The Egyptian temples were built in alignment with the heavens. Each temple is tuned to a unique musical scale based on its dimensions, and sacred proportions. In the early 90s, I was working with Carol Horn and Antoine Sarand in Egypt, and I guess my first trip there was in 87, and I noticed that the temple walls of Abydos were ringing 
singing back to me. I was dumbstruck. I was shaken. I had never had that experience anywhere, singing or playing the harp. And so I went back in 91 with Antoine and Carol, and we did research in measuring the, the chambers 